So Dan Hooker, he's kind of been on like a bit of a resurgence, which is weird, right? Because when you look at his losses, he is only lost to the best, the very best of the best, right? I mean, apart from Arnold Allen, and Arnold Allen is a phenomenal fighter, phenomenal. But as we know, that was down at 145. And look at Dan Hooker, man. He really, he has no business being down at 145. When he moved down there, he looked like he was battling stage four. You know what I mean? Like he just did not deserve to be in that weight class. It's a very good look for how Kayla Harrison is going to look. She used to fight at 155, mate. And she's going to be dropping all the way down to 135. It is a great look into the future. You want to know how Kayla Harrison's going to look? Just go look at Dan Hooker when he made his weight cut. So Dan's losses, this resurgence that he's on, he, he, he only lost, yeah, to Islam Makhachev, champ, yeah, uh, Michael Chandler, Bellator, champ, absolute warrior, absolute warrior, nearly beat uh, Dustin Poirier in the first round. He lost to Dustin Poirier, warrior, this close to being a UFC champion. They're really, really good losses for Hooker. And he is clearly the kind of guy that does not care about his body when he's in the cage. He is just ready to bang every single time. And that is why we love him. And then he goes ahead, he gets some wins, and now he has called out Benil Dariush. And someone who, this time last year, Benil shouldn't have been thinking of anything else other than a title shot. But if a week is a long time in MMA, then a year is a lifetime, right? Benny has had two big losses. And Dan wants to know if Benny wants to know if Benny is still at that level. How's that for some schoolyard whispers? And we're talking about that hard ass meat grinder, that top 10 level of the 155 division. Well, it's very funny that we were talking about Conor McGregor and maybe opening up a new weight class yesterday because it's just such a stacked division that if there was a 165, but Neil Dariush could have been a 165 champion for a year or two years. It's almost like you can have the, the, it, the top 10 can have two divisions running parallel to each other and Benny was right there. And now Dan is going to check that or is offering to check that. It's almost like he's offering to be a gatekeeper for someone like in the other direction, right? You know, a gatekeeper is usually someone working their way up. You're either in the top 15 or you're not in the top 15. And that gatekeeper is there to check whether or not you can actually do it. And that gatekeeper is like Anthony Smith. Yeah, Neil Magny. Fyoti Yan, unfortunately. These names, they kill 90% of their division below them, but they are the difference between the rankings and the big boys at the top. And now Dan Hooker has had a few wins from that direction, and he's offering to be that gate swinging the other way. You're either in the top six, seven, eight, or you're not. And Dan is offering to check that for you. And when it comes to the actual matchup itself, I love it. I love the matchup. I love the match. I see Benny winning it with his grappling. Like Dan needs someone to stand and bang with him. And if Benny does that, I, I really, I think Benny is too smart for that. I think he needs to know. I think he knows that he needs to get a win back on the board. And he seems like the kind of guy that's going to be very, very methodical about that. And to make sure he gets that win. Benny could be the kind of guy that's going to be like, I don't care if this is a boring fight. I just need to get the win. And when Benny is in that mindset, it's the grappling that's going to do it. Whereas Dan, he seems to have slipped more and more into this crazy joker mindset era of his. He's always been a madman, but he is just getting more and more mad as time goes on. He is in there to swing and have fun like a Michael Chandler or a Johnny Walker. The thing is though, Dan is going to be 34 this year, right? And that Dustin fight was now four years ago. There's, there's only so many wars that you can have in there. And Dan Hooker is older, right? I mean, I love Dan, you know, we're neighbors, mate. So when you see me walking down the street, please don't beat the piss out of me. That's a joke, he's in New Zealand. It's an entirely different country, but we're in the same region. But I'm trying to say, <laughs> Dan, the speech, listen to his speech. It's already sounding thick with CTE. And at 34, how many more wars can you have in you? Even with Benny's age, which like, he's clearly been lied to as a child. Like his mother gave him a made up birth certificate. 
If you think Benil Dariush is the same age as Dan Hooker, I mean, just look at him. One of these guys is not the same as the other. So let's assume that Benil Dariush, you know, he's coming off two losses. He's going into this fight somewhere around the age of 44, something like in that age group somewhere. Dan Hooker is going to be 34. To me, it's still an unquestionable win for Benil Dariush, purely because of the mindset of it and a level of grappling. Whereas Dan Hooker is going to go in there and he's going to look for a war and Benny is going to be too clever for that. Too clever for that. He'll stand with Dan for a bit, but eventually he will lock up the clinch and use that to just work his chain wrestling. To me, the only question about that fight is when it does get made, what new tattoos will Dan Hooker have? Maybe he'll have something crazy written across the top of his forehead just to complete that Joker phase going on. Who knows? You let me know what do you think about that fight down there in the comments. Do you think it's a good fight for Benil Dariush to take? And if so, who do you think would win that matchup? It's very interesting to me. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comments. If you've been enjoying these videos, maybe go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It means so much to small creators like myself. And of course, I will see you all in the next one.